In the headlines, the Canefield Urban Council suspends collection of house taxes since Hurricane Maria, a solitary man charged with the second murder of the year, and Calypso King Bob targets schools to impact positive change in youth. I am Andrea V with the Channel 5 News, back with the details after this. M&J Covering is the producer of designed galvanized and galvalum in Dominica. They design to your specifications, color and length, four styles of galvanized and galvalum pre-painted roofing sheets as requested and supply all your galvalum accessories. M&J Covering helps you control spending and reduce waste. At M&J Covering, they are also equipped to build your roof to precise standards anywhere on island. So come to M&J Covering at One Mile in Portsmouth or call 445-5001-275-5003 today. Thank you for staying with us. First up, Chairman of the Canefield Urban Council, Maxima Powell, says a deliberate decision was taken to let residents off from payments of house rates since Hurricane Maria. Powell says his council is sympathetic to the situation the September disaster has left the populace in. Because of our scarce um, financial resources, now is not a time that we can really all do you owe your taxes, you have to pay, but now is not a time where we can go knocking at homeowners, those asking them to pay taxes when a lot of them maybe not, does not even covered, have not even been covered with insurance, you know, and so, so. I figure um, the, the council is trying its best, you know, we're working to make sure we alleviate the situation in Canefield, to make sure that we can make the residents of Canefield comfortable the council continues to seek relief aid for displaced residents using its office as a shelter. Well, most of them in there come from the Benaravin area, where they have lost houses in this area. Some were renting houses that was taken by the Ravin also. So um, we had to put them up at the shelters. They were at, um, previously at the Gospel Mission Hall. Um, at the, that's the church close to the Canefield, yep, to the airport. But um, after a few months, being the church had to get back to resume normalcy, so we had to put them at the council building, which is also a hurricane shelter. And hoping that we can get some assistance or central government can get involved with the council so we can help these people to secure at least some decent home. Meantime, Powell has some advice for those involved in the construction sector, like him. It's not like house owners want a sweepstick, but all of us got poorer. And with the magnitude of work that is supposed to be done in Dominica, we can never even cover that. So we, sh we should work with our residents to build, if we're talking about building resilience and, you know, developing our country. We should work with our people to make sure that Dominica, by extension, can get off of that situation after Maria. In other developments, residents of Pishle can now breathe a sigh of relief as a temporary bypass in that community has been completed. Pishle was declared a special disaster area after Tropical Storm Erica in 2015 and following Hurricane Maria, there was even more severe damage to that community. One of the worst hit areas was the main road in Pishle, as a section of that road had been dislodged during the hurricane. An earlier makeshift bypass in the area did not hold up well during times of inclement weather, and this was an area of growing concern for motorists and residents alike. Just last week, a concrete bypass was completed in the area, and a project officer for the South, Yannick Regis, says a lot of work has been done on improving the road network in Pishle. Basically, I've been clearing some of the box covers. They, you know, they were blocked because of so much debris and dirt. And they had done a good job so far in clearing it out. So whereas before it was cleared, a lot of the water used to overflow. And that used to cause a little flooding issue in the village. But because it has been cleared, that helped to minimize the amount of excess water going into the village. They just did a new crossing at the bottom part of Fishland, the end of Fishland. Mm -hmm. 
to um, alleviate some of the issues we had since Maria because of the bridge has been destroyed. I thought we had some issues in passing across in two Grand Bay because of the excess water we were passing the riverway. But since they have done the new crossing, it was completed last week, I think that, that will help us go help smooth out the issues we had in going to Grand Bay. Yeah, some people like it, some people don't like it, but I think it's a wait and see process right now. See, let's wait and see how it um how should I, how it acts, how it responds to the a battle, how should I say, uh, some inclement weather. Let's see how it responds to that and let us see how we can take it from there. As a result of Pishle's special disaster area status, residents are even more worried with the current state of living as some houses are still covered with tarpaulin. With the 2018 hurricane season less than three months away, Regis says a massive project is to get underway in the community for the re-roofing of houses. Um, well, we are waiting. We're currently waiting to commence in work in Pichelin. Hopefully we can get some work started in Pichelin maybe in the next week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. like, out of them are waiting this, you know, it's hurricane season is approaching us and everybody is very concerned about um, the quality of their roof. Yeah, you know, some of the roofs, most roofs are still damaged in some some way. So um, I also am excited to see the work start and to see their work um, comments work comments on their house, on their roof. I think we are going to do a great job. Just a matter of time, and we ask for our patience and why we we comments everything. We have to follow the weather patterns. We have to pay attention to the radio, the Met Office. We have to be very vigilant and. Because if there's anything dire right now, I think we, some of us will have to leave Pichelin because there isn't a proper hurricane shelter in Pichelin right now, safe hurricane shelter in Pichelin right now. So we just have to be very um, aware of the weather, weather patterns, and I say very, be very vigilant, always following your weather report and listening to it. Edward Labasse, who has acted as the general manager of the Public Works Corporation on several occasions, has passed away suddenly. Idona Jean Baptist has that story. Labasia's substantive post at the time of his death was acting general manager of the PWC. The Point Michel man was an engineer by profession. General Secretary of the Public Service Union Thomas Leta said he was to meet with Labasia soon concerning PWC staff issues. Let me extend on behalf of the executive general membership and the staff of the Dominican Public Service Union, our condolences to his wife or the members of his family, his relatives and close friends, as well as the members down at the Public Works Corporation on his passing. Indeed, we are very, very saddened by that event. A Salisbury man has been charged with the second murder for 2018. Rodley Common was charged with murder on Wednesday, three days after Cheyenne John, better known as Lloyd Casimir of Salisbury, was found dead near a bar. The police have concluded investigations in respect to the incident which occurred at Salisbury on the 3rd of March 2018 and which resulted in the death of one adult male of that community. Rodley Common, male adult of Salisbury, has since been charged with the offense of murder. The deceased, who was known by the name Lloyd Kazemi for all his life, is actually she and John. It was discovered that the deceased birth records did not include his father's name. The Commonwealth of Dominica Police Force extends condolences to the family and friends of the late she and John, also known as Luto and Lloyd Kazemi. You are watching the Channel 5 News. When we return, we will tell you what King Bob has been up to as of late. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fenced pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. 
Do you need more cash for that home improvement? Then come to Fast Cash, where we give you more. At Fast Cash, our customers get more funds and more time to repay. But wait, can't come to us? We'll come to you, and our mobile officer will get you on your way. Small businesses, consumers, and taxi owners, Fast Cash has more for everyone. Simply call or visit any of our locations for more. Smarter, faster, better. Fast Cash. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. The 2018 Calypso Monarch is hoping to enhance the education curriculum in order to bring about positive change in the youth. Daryl Bob, who won the Monarch title last month, said he wants his reign to be one with a difference, especially for young people. Channel 5 News caught up with the Calypso King after his first social outreach program where he spoke at a Girls Empowerment Day camp which was organized by the East Dominica Children's Federation. It's really nice and it's unique. I've never done anything like that before. What the program is doing is trying to make the kids understand how resilient nature itself can be and how they themselves can fit, fit their, their stories into that, you know, their life stories and achievements and so on into that. So it's nice, it's beautiful. I, I, like, I like new things mm -hmm. and I'm certain that um, we'll have some success stories coming out of them because they are very bright children. It's definitely one of the things on my, on my, on my agenda to do during the year. Mm -hmm. I am going to be reaching out to the kids at schools I will go to them and um, that's one of the things I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to leave it myself if I cannot accomplish that. The monarch believes that he can use the influence gained through his title to be a motivational speaker both for boys and girls. The thing is, um, it's going to be a challenge and I, I'm, I'm ready for the challenge. Um, it's going to be a challenge because Calypso in Dominica or in most part of the re parts of the region for that matter has not necessarily been a young people's thing and, and now I have to try to see how I can bridge that gap with the cooperation of a number of other people, including the media. Mm -hmm. So I, I know definitely that um, it's going to be a challenge, but I think it's something that is attainable, most definitely, and um, I'm going to put my all into it. Because um, fortunately, Calypso is not the only thing that I do. Mm -hmm. So I will, I'll be able to make that, that transition and merge and bring their interest to the Calypso through the other things that I do. And the things that I am passionate about are not things that are restricted to the male gender. Um, for instance, music, um, playing the guitar, singing, I mean, it's what, what a boy or girl can do. Um, even photography, photography has become one of my, my passions, you know, so everything I do basically, boy and girl can fit into it. Bob encouraged members of society to be good role models for the youth and says one of the ways he wants to bring about positive developments is through enhancing an aspect or two of the current education curriculum. Let us all be the best we can be, you know, and let us try to be role models for our children, you know. Um, nobody can be perfect, I, I'm, I'm no angel, but I think if we focus on the positive things in our societies, there's so much we can, we can, um, we can, we can achieve as, as a nation, as a unit together. And there are a number of things I want to address as far as education is concerned with two main things in my platform that I will, I will release to the media pretty soon. Um, but I want to talk to the powers that be officially first. But it's going to be big and it's going to be very, very important for our society. Operations of the Love One Teach One Foundation are expected to regain some level of normalcy as the Roseau Primary School has ceased to function as an emergency shelter. The Love One Teach One Foundation is run by Gloria Walsh and aims to provide assistance for children in the Bath Estate and Silver Lake areas through the donation of school items and the provision of an after-school program among other activities. The majority of children who benefit from the foundation were impacted by Maria and the institution has faced many challenges getting back on its feet. We have our challenges, love one teach one, because um, the Rosa Primary School, we are, we are doing our after school program. Um, they were using it as a shelter. So right now, the people have moved to the Bath State Community Center and we are just looking forward to going back maybe sometime next week or maybe after Easter to continue our program. But most of our children have been affected, especially in the Silver Lake area, where some of them lost everything. So what we have done, um, we have um, gotten some stuff from our donors overseas. So we have spread a lot of um, charitable work across the across the area 
Walsh says luckily the foundation was able to utilize the services of criminologist Dr. Peter Serja to help with counseling for the children who have been traumatized by the storm. So right now what we are doing now, we're trying to regroup with the young people, especially those who have lost everything and then we are still trying to get some of their friends to join with the youth group and also to work with the youth division to see what we can um, do for the children in moving forward. So another way forward is getting, we have a young group from Trafalgar, you know, willing to work with us along together with Dr. Peter Seja and we're just going to try to see how we can assist families and also the children in the program. The foundation's director also underscored the importance of teaching the youth about the environment, especially with the climate change phenomenon. She is hoping that a Jeff Small Grants program for the communities will resume shortly. We have started, but we, had our, we have had our challenges. Is a Jeff Small Grant um, project in terms of the environment, in, but we're starting with Silver Lake first and then we're moving down to Bath Estate uh, in terms of planting more trees and beautifying the whole area and speaking to them about you know their environment and how to take care of their garbage in terms of you know and um, putting it in safe places to prevent you know um, the different diseases especially with the rodents that's roaming around. And bananas from an initial batch of plantlets brought in from Martinique expected to be ready for harvest in eight months. Eden Ojem Baptist tells us more. Martinique has promised to donate to Dominica 4,400 tissue culture plantlets originating from Israel. Dominica received the first shipment of 2,200 of that gift from Martinique last week. Coordinator of the Banana and Plantain Management Program, Angus McIntyre, said a Martinican team visited Dominica to conduct a demonstration on Wednesday at Diller's Warrington Farm in Kalibishi. Prior to Maria, we had roughly about 14 to 15,000 plants at the Postman Agricultural Station, and they all got, you know, barring just a few hundreds, they all got washed away by the river. And at, these plants were at a stage similar to what we have here now, they were just actually ready to go into the fields. Farmers already dug their holes, they were waiting for these plants, and here came Maria, you know, so um, that intervention was quite timely by the Martinican team. McIntyre said bananas will be available on the local market by June from existing banana farms, while those imported plantlets will produce the crop in eight months. Prior to Hurricane Maria, we had a lot of bunches, bananas were in full production. We were the virtue of getting, trying to export some bananas to the region. However, Hurricane Maria, came in and basically knocked down about 100%. Apart from the old bananas that were sheltered by a little valley, a tree, a building, let's say 100% of the commercial project and production got knocked down. Mm -hmm. But banana is a versatile crop. A banana will knock down and then in, in less than no time it will send up the suckers. Mm -hmm. You know, so what we had encouraged farmers and what the farmers did, they went in and they, they suckered their bananas. You don't left basically one follower or depends on your system, two followers. And then we notice that these bananas are actually um, bunching now. When I mean bunching, they are flowering, you know, and the bunch will come in, um, you know, a couple of months after that. The Ministry of Agriculture has been observing Martinique's banana production system to ensure proper due diligence before importing plantlets from there. We have made actually two visits to Martinique already. The first visit we made to Martinique was to really understudy their production systems look at the company producing the organic um, fertilizer, and in studying the production system, we noticed that some, that there were some differences in what you do in Dominica. For one, the varieties they use, or the clones they use, which this one is Gal. Gal is a clone originated from Israel. Mm -hmm. So what they use, these varieties were producing much bigger bunches than ours. You know, we saw that. The trees are a bit shorter, you know, so farmers didn't have to use ladders to go on the flower. Mm -hmm. so, so that was the first visit. So we saw that, we got interested in that, you know. And then we made a second visit, as you mentioned about the pests, mm -hmm. to go to the specific areas and we did that jointly, Mission Agriculture with the Chief Plant Quarantine Officer. We visited there, he, myself and some other people. And we look at all their systems, all their sterilization, the whole works, you know, to ensure that we don't have nothing being introduced. That's news. Stay tuned for your sports highlights with Kenny Williams.
In persons with TB sneeze or cough, healthy persons nearby breathe in the droplets and the bacteria can lodge in their lungs. People with weakened immune systems such as HIV AIDS, alcohol and drug users, smokers, children and the elderly are most susceptible. Persons with a cough should take precautions when in contact with persons in public places. Cover your mouth when sneezing and coughing. Visit your doctor or health center. You must complete your treatment. TB can be cured even with HIV. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB and HIV. Protect yourself and others. First up, West Indies A escaped with a narrow victory to defeat England Lions by five runs in the first of three one-day international matches on Tuesday. West Indies won the toss and elected to bat first and scored 272 in 49.5 overs. Jermaine Blackwood added a solid 99 to help lift the score to ensure a Windies win. Rakeem Cornwall further supported with 44 while Andrew McCarthy chipped in with 33. And although Samahin struck an impressive 144 for Lions, that was not enough for the win when his team was dismissed for 267 in reply to the Windies score. Nick Gubbins also had a good knock with a 54 run contribution. However, Kimo Paul and Rakeem Cornwall combined helped further cement the Windies victory, together taking seven wickets. Paul picked up five for 49, while Cornwall took two for 35. The second ODI is carded for Friday in a day night match. As of Tuesday's encounter, West Indies led the series 1 0. Meantime, West Indies captain Jason Holder says he is pleased with the Windy start to their World Cup qualifying campaign. The Windies went on to defeat United Arab Emirates by 60 runs in their first match of the ICC World Cup qualifiers on Tuesday. Playing every game as a final, as I, as I said from the very beginning, you know, we've, we've seen the op a few of the opposition so far and, and everybody has a point to prove, you know, everybody wants to qualify for the World Cup. It's a big occasion, so we would expect the NG to come, you know, firing at us and, and to give us another push, you know, but it's up to us to be consistent and, and to be disciplined. I think once we're consistent and disciplined, then um, the results will take care of themselves, you know, um, but credit to me, the guys players, and I'm pleased with, with the effort. He says contributions from Shimron Hetmeyer and Chris Gale were crucial in yesterday's victory. Yeah, extremely pleased with the way the, guy, the, way the guys played. Um, obviously, Chris was outstanding and you know, he really set the tone for us. You know, and I think the beauty about the way Chris played is that the other guys came in and supported him. You know, he was going great, bl guns blazing, and a guy like Evan Lewis, who's normally quite fluent as well, you know, was able to support him and just gave him the strike. Um, I think Shermore at right was outstanding as well as his maiden ODA century. Um, you know, he really supported Chris up front, and then you know when Chris left, you know, he was the guy to take over the mantle. You know, and he was outstanding at doing that and showed a lot of maturity for a very young player. I was pleased with the way he you know, up front. You know, I got a bit of bounce and a bit of seam, so. I I just try to use that to my advantage. Um, I think Kimar started well, and, as well as Sheldon before he got injured. You know, um, it was one of those wickets where um, the ball did carry through, and, and it had a bit of seam movement up front. So, you know, it's, it's just about putting the ball in the right areas. But as you said, you know, credit to the UAE bats, batters. I thought they played really well, and you know, they pushed us in the very end. And, but I think to 350 runs was too much for them. The Windies' next match in the competition will be against Papua New Guinea on Thursday. Moving on to football, where 50 young Dominican footballers will get a chance to impress local and international coaches when the Flow Skills Ultimate Football Experience returns this Saturday. Flow and Manchester United Football Club have partnered once more to bring an opportunity to footballers across 14 Caribbean countries where two athletes will win a trip to Old Trafford in Manchester, England in the end. The players are expected to go through tests in short passing, dribbling, defensive qualities, teamwork, attitude and goal scoring, which come from the Manchester United Soccer School's program. Based on the rankings and assessments in each skill, two winners will be selected at the end of Saturday's event and move to Trinidad, where they will compete in a final weekend of skills and small-sided games. The final weekend will include one-on-one -on -one training with Manchester United Soccer School coaches. Last year, Jemiah Timothy and Corbin Paul were selected from a pool of 34 players here who went to the second phase in Trinidad. The Dominica leg of the 2018 Flow Skills Ultimate Football Experience is carded for Windsor Park on Saturday between 8.30 a.m. 
and 12.30 p.m. The Flow Skills Ultimate Football Experience is one of several Manchester United and Flow Partnership initiatives. And the 2018 OECA Cycling Championship might be on a more entertaining route this year. This according to President of Dominica Cycling Association, Ronald Charles, who says the local body is in discussion with all and sundry to ensure the best route possible for this year's competition. Last year's route was from Portersville to Portsmouth and back, a 96.56-kilometer race, which Antiguan representative Jim Bridges won. The OECA Cycling Championship was held in Dominica for the first time in 2017. Up to yesterday, myself and the president, Mr. Trevor Bailey, was talking about the route. We are still juggling with the route. Some people think we should leave it the Dominican Challenge from Roseau to Portsmouth and back. Others think we should do it more of a circuit style to gym it like, like Layu and back so that we can get encompassed more people who can be closely knitted. And so we are debating. We're really debating about it. Uh, the president thinks, the president of the Caribbean um, Cycling Association thinks that we should really do it more close circuit, meaning closer to home and so that more people can be engaged and people can come and have a nice time with their friends, families and so forth. Meantime, Charles gave Channel 5 Sports a sneak peek into the plans of the association, saying school penetration and more youth competitions are some major target areas for his team. Recently, DCA announced it identified funding to further develop the sport locally. One of our main objectives this time around is to target the whole issues of um, visiting the school, especially the primary schools and the secondary school, to get those clubs formed. And I believe some of the bicycles that we will purchase will go towards those schools in order that they can put teams together. And then we can have our annual school event, cycling school event, we can have national events, we can have different types of events because you'll realize very, very, very soon from now, the young people are going to come and dominate the sport. The, the likes of myself, Daddy Chess, Levi, we're just there, you know, trying to encourage them. But I'm sure, and I, I cannot wait to live in my lifetime, when I will see the youngsters really take the sports and go. And we will have our own little category, which is called the Masters. We'll take our time and do what we have to do. But for real competition, you will have to look at the youngsters. And that is why when we get those funding, this is where you're going to concentrate. This is where we're going to provide some support in terms of technical support. support and then do what we have to do. That's all the sports for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us next time. To end the news, the headlines again. Canefield Urban Council suspends collection of house taxes since Hurricane Maria, a solitary man charged with the second murder of the year, and Calypso King Bob targets schools in order to impact positive change in youth. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Andrea Louis, and to all of our viewers around the world, thank you so much for watching. Join us tomorrow.